after studying this module you shall be able to know about the nature of various prints and marks related to track marks their collection and preservation introduction tracking is one of the oldest signs known to the man before the development of agriculture hunting was major occupation of the primitive man and was the main source of supplying him food and clothing the men of these ages had to learn to recognize and distinguish between the track marks left by the various type of animals he had to learn to distinguish the track made by dangerous animal from the track made by other animal which were likely to call an easy prey to his crude weapon and provide him with the food his existence depend upon the ability to master the science of tracking this science of tracking has been kept alive by shikaris and professional trackers in remote regions of various countries of the world muraz of saudi arabia bedouis of egypt and nearer home by khojis of rajasthan gujarat punjab and some part of neighboring pakistan the khojis a group of untrained and illiterate tribal people is known for their skill in tracking down criminals though they may have a difficulty in explaining their method but have a high degree of skill in observing tracking and comparing the criminal even from the partial footprint by observing the presence of an additional toe absence of any toe scars or wrinkles pattern and other peculiarities such as tissue growth on the foot each of these were taken as an extra advantage for the identification of in an individual the police in tracking down the criminal employ a few of these professional trackers there are numerous stories of incredible feats performed by these professional trackers an expert khojis is confident to say from track of the person whether it belongs to a man or a woman and that to whether he is a young or old and has any deformity or not despite advancements in the scientific aids in the investigation of crime the older techniques of tracking by khojis are still capable of enough to produce good results now in nature track marks are varied in nature naked footprints footwear marks paw marks tire marks drag lines of a load impression of a stick or pug marks of a beast are also included in track evidence individual marks and their collective patterns are both useful in the identification of individuals a mark may be a print or an impression a mark having two dimensions like length and breadth is called print while a mark with three dimensions length breadth and height or depth is an impression the term print which is usually found on hard surface and impressions which is mostly found in comparatively soft surfaces has been used erratically in literature so the term marks include both prints and impressions objects smeared with powders and liquids leave prints on various surfaces thus a foot or footwear smeared with either dust ink oil or blood etc leaves prints prints can also be found on oiled waxed or dusty surfaces without being smeared foot and footwear impressions can also be found on surfaces like soft clay mud and snow etc 
principles and method for the evaluation of all types of marks are alike though procedure for collection differs for prints and impressions. The following types of the track marks are significantly forensically. Now the footprints. The footprints are generally found almost at every crime scene as none can tread on the ground without leaving foot or footwear impressions collectively termed as marks. These marks are mostly found at the following points. First, at the point of entry, second, at the scene where crime took place, in homicide and or rapes where the struggle or fight has taken place, third, the route through the crime scene. This may or may not be apparent, fourth, at the point of exit. It can sometimes be harder to find than at the point of entry. Footprints are particularly helpful in personal identification of the suspect because each footprint is unique. Careful scientific examination of these footprint aids information which aids in linking the suspect with the crime scene or conclusively demonstrate that the suspect was present at the scene of crime. Footprints also give indications about the number of individuals present at the scene of crime. They may also indicate whether the struggle has taken place or not, about the routes taken by the culprits, their assembly points, their conference site, their hiding places, etc. Still some percentage of people in India, including majority of the criminals in rural areas, usually move around barefooted. The naked foot marks are therefore frequently found at and around the scene of crime. But it has been found that due to the following reasons, the positive and definite identity of the footmark could not be established in many cases. Either the footmarks are incomplete or the mark do not carry ridges detailed or the mark have only few individualization characteristics or the specimen marks are carelessly lifted or the investigator overlook these marks and valuable information is lost. This might have happened due to the number of reasons like incomplete searching, exit and entry points of crime scenes are not known, arrived at the scene after the area has been walked all over or weather may not be conductive to record permanently. It is well established that every body part including feet are in proportion to the total body weight. Thus the foot measurements can be useful to find approximate height of the person. Now the footwear marks. Footwear marks include the marks of shoes, sandals and chapels. The footwear can be factory made or handmade. It is made up of leather, rubber, natural or synthetic or plastics. Cloth is used in canvas shoes. In some parts of India, shoes are also made from strings alone. The persons especially in rural areas wear handmade leather shoes. The sole of a pair of shoes may be snizzed, nailed or pasted with the upper leather. Ordinarily, this stitching and nails are used in combination. The adhesive are increasingly used. The footwear evidence suffers from one great drawback. If the culprit is not taken in custody soon after the commission of crime and continues to wear the shoes, the additional wear and tear will change the original surface pattern and identification of the marks may not be possible with respect to the shoe. The time after which the marks become unidentifiable cannot be given. It varies or deteriorates with the extent of use or misuse, nature of the sole material and the territory in which it is used. It is always advisable to get the footwear marks compared even when it is recovered after a considerable interval of time. 
On the other hand, footwear marks are identified with respect to the footwear in about 80% cases. The belief of the judiciary, the bar and the investigating officers that the naked foot marks are more valuable than the footwear marks is therefore not correct. The forensic importance of the foot mark is identified accurately is of course greater because it links the culprit directly with the crime. In case of footwear marks, it is necessary to establish that the culprit owned and wore the particular shoe at the material time as the footwear marks identifies the footwear and not the wearer. Other evidences must establish the latter. Now, the tire marks. In crime cases, motor vehicles are very frequently involved for coming at and going away from the crime scene after commission of crime. The tire marks left by the vehicles used can be valuable evidences in narrowing down the type of vehicle involved and the route adopted before and after the commission of crime. The tire marks are also like footprints, either two-dimensional prints or three-dimensional impressions depending upon the surface on which they are present. Now, the skid marks. The skid marks are the marks left by wheels of motor vehicles which are no longer rotating. These marks are characteristic in appearance and caused due to the wheels sliding across the surface of the road. Skid marks are short-lived type of evidences which are left at the scene and play an important role in the successful reconstruction of a road traffic incident. They help in the estimation of the speed of the vehicle which is an important consideration in a hit and run crime scene or in case of vehicle clashes. Now the pug marks. The term pug mark refers to the footprints of almost all the animals. Every individual animal species has a distinct pug mark and is used as a mean of identification. Wildlife conservatives are often engaged in collecting different sorts of data regarding the pug marks in the areas specifically assigned to them. Pug marks are also used for the tra tracking rough animals which may be a danger to mankind or even to themselves because of injuries etc. Trained wildlife investigators make an accurate identification of species, sex, age and physical conditions of an animal by analyzing their specific pug marks. Now the extraneous matters. Footwear sometimes also pick up secondary evidences like dust, dirt, paint and other materials from the places through which the wearer passes. The study of these traces or secondary evidences proves useful in cases where the places visited have characteristic soil or dust. For example, the shoe will pick up floor in a floor mill, coal from a colliery, dye from a dye factory and fibers from a cloth mill and so on. Even the soils from the different places give significant variations when chemically analyzed in the forensic science laboratory. Now the collection and preservation of track marks. After carefully observing the track marks at most probable locations, mostly at the point of entry, crime scene and at the point of exit or away from the scene. It is the most important to collect and preserve the track marks which includes footprints, footwear marks and tire marks. Depending upon the marks, whether they are two or three dimensional, proper technique is required to be adopted. Now the footprints on the floor. Footprints are often present at the inner location of the crime scene, especially on hard surfaces such as floor, glass, countertops, desktops and chair seats etc. A simple procedure to locate these indoor prints is by means of high intensity light at a low angle. Often these prints two dimension are dust prints and very easily destroyed. Once detected every care must be taken to preserve it. Now 
the footwear and tire marks. Although great emphasis has been given to the footprints, much of what follows concerning collecting and preservation, this type of evidence applies equally well to tire marks evidence. Foot impressions three-dimensional are generally found outside the crime scene, which means at the point of entry or exit. The first precautionary measure is therefore to protect the impression from alteration or destruction preferably by covering it with a box or cordoning of the whole area. Impressions in thawing snow are especially difficult so a box covered with snow to prevent thawing should protect them. If a foot impression is in a such position that it is possible for it to gradually fill up or to be damaged by running water. It must be surrounded by a wall of earth, sand or snow alternatively. A hole may be dug close to the impression and the water drained towards the hole. However, these protective measures are only stoppages and the actual preservation should be undertaken as soon as possible. Now the summary. Track marks are varied in nature, naked footprints, footwear marks, paw marks, tire marks, drag lines of a load, impression of a sick or pug marks of a beast are also included in track evidence. Individual marks and their collective patterns are both useful in the identification of individuals. The footprints are generally found almost at every crime scene as none can thread on the ground without leaving foot or footwear prints impressions collectively termed as mark. Footwear marks include the marks of shoe, sandal and chapels. The footwear can be factory made or handmade. It is made up of leather, rubber which is natural or synthetic or plastics. Clothes is used in canvas shoes. In some part of India shoes are also made from strings alone. The persons especially in rural area wear handmade leather shoes. The term pug mark refers to the footprints of almost all the animals. Every individual animal species has a distinct pug mark and is used as a mean for identification. Wildlife conservatives are often engaged in collecting different sort of data regarding the pug marks in the areas specifically assigned to them. Footwear sometimes also pick up secondary evidences like dust, dirt, paint and other materials from the places through which the wearer passes. The study of these traces or secondary evidences proves useful in cases where the places visited have characteristic soil or dust.